You will be the two witnesses to speak uh, uh, in opposition. You want to identify, have us identify yourself first, or just speak seriatim? No, just go, well, well. Go yes. ahead. The two witnesses who are going to speak in more detail, those should be the first two. Others will just identify yourselves for the record. Okay. Thank you. My name is Bruce Fine. I'm counsel for the Turkish American Legal Defense Fund. I was formerly associate deputy attorney general under President Reagan's administration. We strongly oppose this particular bill on three grounds. One, we sharply dispute the idea that there's any consensus about an Armenian genocide. There are reputable scholars who hotly dispute that characterization, including Bernard Lewis at Princeton, who's a White House advisor, Justin McCarthy, Stanford Shaw, a famed historian at UCLA and otherwise. And in our statement that we've compiled and we'll submit for the record, we had a very lengthy list of scholars. So this is not accurate to suggest that the genocide is something that's as clear as the force of gravity. And indeed, genocide is specifically uh, defined in the Genocide Convention of 1948, which has been ratified by the United States Senate. And it does not apply, by the way, to what was suggested to Darfur and to Cambodia. Indeed, the Cambodian trials underway now charge crimes against humanity, not genocide, because of the specific definition. Darfur now, the International Criminal Court is pursuing that as a crime against humanity, not genocide. And this is not a proper educational um, a characterization to make when there's two sides to a proposition to teach it as only there was one. And it creates, therefore, a, a corresponding constitutional problem under the First Amendment. I recall that in the 1940s, there was an obligation to recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. It resulted in a very famous Supreme Court case called West Virginia School Board versus Barnett. And the court there said, no, school authorities cannot compel people to believe and to assert certain things that aren't educationally founded as a condition to remaining in school, to graduating from school, or otherwise. And we think that it's quite clear under that Supreme Court precedent, unless you have an educationally sound obligation to recite Armenian genocide is a fact, it's not disputed, you are compelling the salute to a belief that is coercive and violates the First Amendment. Then there's the last problem I think we see in this particular characterization, and that's the foreign affairs powers of the United States of America. There's only one foreign affairs voice on genocide. That's that in the White House and the Congress. The President of the United States twice has addressed this issue when he was in Ankara and on April 24th when he issued a proclamation relating to the genocide. And he said, this is something that needs to be resolved in collaboration between Armenia and Turkey. Turkey has already accepted the idea of an international commission of experts to decide the relevant facts and to give a characterization. Armenia has indicated maybe they're willing to go forward, and that could be an adjudication or something that would be definitive on the matter. As California could follow the lead. But the point is that the Congress of the United States and the President of the United States are fully engaged in this particular issue. California can't inject its own particular characterization and create a Tower of Babel on an issue that creates the potential for great antagonism towards Turkey. I'll conclude there and welcome any questions, and I'll hand it over to Bonnie. Thank you. Next, second witness. My name is Bonnie Joy Kaslan. I am a former California classroom educator and department chairman, and I sit on the Assembly of Turkish Americans Association on their board of trustees. I've been involved with this issue since 1985, before it became a mandated uh, human rights genocide curriculum. This curriculum, which I know has been revised, updated, and re published, contains individual and community and academic resources to supplement the subject matter in the curriculum. Yet it fails in the test in the teaching of controversial issues such as Armenians' claims of one-sided suffering and loss, ignoring Muslim victim victims and others of the then Ottoman Empire. Today, California faces an economic crisis of such proportion that on May 19, 2009, a special election will be held to secure monies for education. Teachers are being laid off, programs are being cut, class sizes will increase, and here we have before us what looks like <coughs> pork barrel special interest spending. The proposed mandate of exposure to oral histories as a prerequisite for graduation does not provide clear guidelines to ensure that presentations made by narrators are accurately represented in all cases. Given the suffering in the Ottoman Empire, will there be oral histories allowed and accounting of the deaths of 2.4 million Ottoman Muslims in Anatolia during World War I, the era that the curriculum inappropriately refers to as solely as the Armenian Genocide. 
Turkish American students should have should be able to explain how their families' villages were destroyed during the Armenian Revolt, 1885-1915, and the subsequent Russian invasion. Given that resources noted in the model curriculum do exist that encompass oral histories within the Armenian community, this bill is redundant and unnecessary. The state of California's economy and its inability to continue to provide current services, programs, and acceptable classroom size, as well as needed educators, render this bill fiscally irresponsible. Should this bill pass and no monies be allocated, then this bill is a shallow attempt to try to further the agenda of a narrow constituency motivated by politics rather than exemplary pedagogy. And as Bruce said, and I would urge that let us instead expend our energy and resources in applauding and encouraging Turkey and Armenia to continue on their roadmap to bettering their relations by working on the issues that are challenging to them. If they have the courage to explore controversy, why in the education system can't we? They have taken the first step. What are we waiting for? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Questions or comments from committee members? Yes. Senator Simidian. Thank you. Uh, uh, I apologize. I walked in just a moment late. I just wanted to confirm my understanding of what the bill does now, Senator. As I understand it, it simply requires that the Curriculum Commission will consider and vote on whether to adopt the resolution passed by the legislature with the proposed changes. Do I, do I have that right or, or not? That is abs <clears throat> absolutely correct, and at that time uh, they can make uh, the decisions they wish regarding these issues. So this, this committee and the California State Senate and the California State Legislature are not, by this action, actually adopting this as a practice in California's K-12 through school district. Rather, we are presenting it to what many of us would think is the appropriate body to make that judgment. Correct. Nor are they uh, necessarily making a decision about how to treat these issues. All right. So, thank you. I think that's an important distinction that needs to be made just in terms of the bill. That being said... That's not true. Excuse me, sir. Mm -hmm. Senator Simidian? That being said, I, I have to say I, the testimony today is, is disappointing to me. Every, every member of the community will respond in different ways to, to these kinds of comments. I, I know for many in the Armenian American community, uh, a member of which uh, I'm proud to be, um, these kinds of comments evoke a great deal of anger. <coughs> they don't in my case. What they evoke in my case, Senator, is a great deal of sadness. Sadness that we can't for once and for all confront these issues truthfully and then move past them. And I say that in connection with any and every instance of genocide, whether we're talking about the genocide of the Armenians, whether we're talking about the Holocaust of the Jews, whether we're talking about the killing fields of Cambodia, whether we are talking about the ethnic cleansing in the Balkans, where I had an opportunity to serve, where whether we're talking about the horrible 100 days in Rwanda, or whether we're talking about what's going on now in Darfur, which many have described as Rwanda in slow motion. Um, in each and every one of those instances, you can't help but ask, why is it that this happens over and over and over again in our history? Yeah. And I would suggest that the reason it happens over and over and over again in our history is because we are unwilling to step back and confront man's inhumanity to man. And so my reaction, as I say to the comments, is not one of anger, it's one of sadness. Because until and unless we confront these issues in a forthright and intellectually honest way, we're never going to put them behind us, and we're never going to avoid that all-too-human temptation to engage in the same behavior in the years ahead. On this particular issue, I think it is important to note, this issue has long been settled. Jimmy Carter made reference during his presidency to the fact that there was, quote, a concerted effort made to eliminate all the Armenian people, end quote, and described it as, quote, probably one of the greatest tragedies that ever befell any group, end quote. Some years later, President Reagan, who was referenced here today, referred to, quote, the genocide of the Armenians, end quote, in just that language. 
And later, President George Bush, the first President Bush, referred to, quote, the terrible massacre suffered in 1915 to 1923 at the hands of the rulers of the Ottoman Empire. These are direct quotes. <coughs> President Clinton later on referred to the commemoration, quote, of one of the saddest chapters in the history of the century, the deportations and massacre of one and a half million Armenians in the Ottoman Empire in the years 1915 to 1923, end quote. The history is there. It is settled. What hasn't happened yet is that it hasn't been acknowledged. The question arises, I know, year after year, because every year, Madam Chair and members, the California State Senate and the California State Assembly have unanimously adopted resolutions commemorating this historic event. Why do we have to keep raising this issue? And as President Lincoln said, the reason we raise these issues is that to sin by silence when they should protest makes cowards of men. That ought not to be us, and we ought to cast an aye vote on your measure today, sir. Thank you, Senator Simidin.